Welcome back to the channel guys. I know I'm a little down mostly because of a certain aspect in the HM and it's not because of the results. No, no, no. I'm actually doing fine in that as well as getting the rotation in necessary. It's actually about the trading aspect and that the trades in Eastside Hockey Manager are really skewed to the CPU side. They really don't favor you whatsoever and when you try to make it at least somewhat favorable to you, they immediately just cancel it out. I'll show you what I mean in just a second. What's up, peoples? It's Gendo here, and welcome back to Here Comes the Hawks. As always, if you're still enjoying the series, please do go and drop it a like. Now, today, we got a matchup versus our rivals in St. Louis Blues, as well as the Calgary Flames. But before we get to that, we'll get into the matches as well. Don't worry about that. We'll show how we're progressing. Just take a look at the screen in front of you right now. Say hello to Artem Anisimov, one of my centers. He is, at this point in time, a fourth-line center because somehow he is not doing all that well. Through 16 matches, he has a 6.19 average rating, and everything around him really shows that he shouldn't be having that bad of a season. He's got himself seven points, two goals, and five assists. He's a plus player right now, which means that when he's on the ice, uh, the team is scoring goals compared to giving up goals. He's a plus five at this point in time, and he has relatively low penalty minutes. Through the 16 matches, he only has four penalty minutes, so he's not in the box. I honestly don't understand, I and believe me, I've tried to put him on second, third, and fourth line. It's just not working out why he's absolutely playing like garbage. Okay, he's not really garbage per se, but everything around him states that he should be playing a lot better than what he actually is. I guess he's uh, consistently inconsistent, as the old trope says. He probably has a very low consistency stat, which is a hidden attribute. So he has, you can see, sixes and fives in the last five matches. He rarely gets over a seven. So I, I don't know what to say about this kid, except for... If he's going to continue playing like this and being somewhat of a liability for the squad, then it might be time to just move on. But of course I say that, and getting back to my original point in that I'm trying to make trades, uh, the AI just really doesn't want to help me out whatsoever. They are only in it for themselves in the fact that they only want to better their squad, whereas giving me a load of crap. Now, as you can see right here, we'll just go into this first one. Anaheim Ducks, Blackhawks trade. Uh, Artem Anisimov for Martin Hackett, or Martin Hackett, Matt Hackett straight up. Now, Matt is a goalie. I'm not in the mood for a goalie, so I'm going to automatically just reject this. But this is what the trade screen looks like. You can add players. You can add draft picks for future uh, drafts. And you can also add rights for players that are in your minor league system. Uh, as you could do that for the other side as well up here you can gauge the interest so basically like suggesting terms in football manager terms offer cancel or just outright reject so if we gauge the interest uh, Anaheim says that we like the sound of the offer which is obviously in their best interest obviously I don't want to make this trade because I like I said I don't need a goalie at this point in time I want somebody that's of a center position that can play of equal or slightly less of an Isimov just so I can get some value back on my return. So I'm going to reject this trade. Now looking at all these trades, I feel the only one I can get some sort of actual value out of this is Anthony Batetto coming in from Nashville Predators. He is a left defenseman, so yeah, I would be adding more defense than attack. Uh, but I feel like he is probably a second, if not a third line defender, meaning that he does have some of the skill and he has the physical attributes that could make him a very viable force on the defense. Taking a look at uh, everything else, checking, that's a vital stat for a defenseman, hitting as well with a 14 there. Poke check and positioning, maybe not so much, but I'd say positioning more than poke check. But uh, mentally, looks very solid. He doesn't really need to have a lot of flair as a defenseman, so he's fine. And then physically, uh, 12s, 13s, and 14s. So if I were to make this trade, uh, Biteto would be the player to do it. But at this point in time, uh, I do have a lot of defenders coming in through my youth system. Not so much forwards. I don't have a lot of centers and wingers coming through, but I do have a lot of defensemen. So at this point in time, probably I will have to reject this trade. 
So at the end of the day, we're not making any trades, but I did swap a player from my minor leagues up to the main roster and vice versa. Now, the player I sent down was Andrew Desjardins. He was in the same situation as Anisimov in the fact that he was a just above a six average rating, didn't score any goals, assists, was a minus player, meaning that he was giving up goals. The team was giving up goals every time he was on the ice. And even though the stats dictate that he is a very competent center, he was just not producing the goods. Uh, and also at the same point in time, his salary is much less than Anisimov. So it's better to just send him down to the minor leagues in Rockford and recall somebody from Rockford to take his place of equal salary. And the player I brought up was Vincentina Stroza, and in fact, he's very comparable to Desjardins in all aspects, technical, mental, and physical. He's only played two matches so far. He's gotten a six rating in both, but I feel like I should give him a couple more matches, a few more matches to see how he pans out on the third and fourth line. And if he doesn't get any better, then maybe I could recall Desjardins because I want to give the youth a chance. Hina Storz is only 22, so I want to see how he does up here at the top level before making a decision. All right, now let's get into the matches played. The final match of October, we took on the LA Kings at home, coming away with a 4-2 victory. It was a very tight affair after the first period. It was 2-all right there. Panarin and Hartman getting the goals for us. But Kanan and Nisimov in successive periods, putting the game to bed and getting us all two points here. We didn't have as many shots on goal as the LA Kings did, but we had more on the power play. And as you can clearly see, we had ourselves two power play goals to get us into this match. So our power play is starting to get a lot better. All that training that I said I was going to do is starting to pan out. First match in November and the first match versus our rival St. Louis Blues taking them on at home today. And we got ourselves a 3-0 victory, scoring a goal in each period. Rasmussen, Mott, and Panic all getting on the score sheet. A lot more shots. We did have four power plays. Unfortunately, didn't score on any of them. But more shots on goal, of course, leading to the goals and getting us the two points. Following that, though, it was a very chippy match versus the New Jersey Devils, where unfortunately we came away with a loss, losing by the score of 2-1. to one. Patrick Kane, our only goal scorer on the day, nodding the matchup at one apiece in the third period. But in the second half of that third period, New Jersey coming away with a very easy goal, sliding it past Crawford to come away with a win. We had more shots. We took more shots on the day, but a very competent goalkeeper in the Jersey Devils net. Coming back home versus the Edmonton Oilers, we see a hat trick by Patrick Kane en route to a 4-2 victory. Ryan Hartman also getting himself on the score sheet. We had to deal with a lot of power plays by Edmonton. In fact, both of their goals were scored on the power play. Uh, got a little chippy in this match too, but we were able to see this out and come away with both points. And finally, in the return leg versus the New Jersey Devils, we come away with a 3-0 victory with Artemi Panarin, Duncan Keith, and Marcus Kruger all getting goals in the second and third periods. Yeah, they played us a little tough in the first period, but we were able to break them down in the second and definitely in the third to come away with both points. So where's that see us on the table? Well, actually pretty favorably, to be honest with you. Since we're only losing one, two at most per session, we got ourselves a 12-4-0 record with 24 points level with the Calgary Flames and only three behind the President's Trophy leaders in Dallas Stars. Dallas doing extremely well this year as they have been in real life. So if we ever face off against them, it's going to be really, really tough. But anyway, guys, we got ourselves a St. Louis Blues matchup followed by the Calgary Flames. So let's get into the Blues match first. Going into today's match, the three players are going to sit out are Kempney, Van Riemsdyk, and Schmaltz. And the lines are going to be as follows. You're going to have Keith and Seabrook on the first and fourth defensive pairing. Jomerson, Roosevelt, the second. Campbell and Polka will be the third. Our lines up front, we're going to have Panarin, Taze, and Hosa, since Hosa is back from his injury. Panna, Kruger, and Kane along the second. Mott, Hinostroza, and Hartman along the third. Rasmussen, Anisimov, and Jordan Tutu along the fourth. Yeah, like I said, Anisimov really needs to pick up his game. That's why I've been dropping him slowly down the lines. He started off at second, then went to third, then went to fourth. If he continues to play badly like this, then he might see himself on a new team sooner rather than later. If only a team wants to trade for him. All right, so I've been hearing what you guys are saying on the last video that you don't want the key highlights, the goals only highlight mode that you want to see on extended to see a little bit more of the match. And that's fine. I will put it on extended. Uh, there were a couple of you who said, hey, put for extended just for uh, you know, big matches only, which this could be uh, construed as a big match. And there was another one that said first and second on key and then third on extended, which... It, the game might be over at that point in time, so it might not be completely fitting. But for right now, we'll just have extended throughout the entirety of the match. So let's drop the puck for St. Louis and see how this goes. Four minutes into the period, St. Louis have themselves somebody in the box. We got ourselves a power play, and can we capitalize on this? Breaking away, Jonathan Taze taking a shot. 
get the puck right back. Can we hold on to it? Can we pressure them? It's covered up by the goalkeeper. We're going to get a face-off in the attacking zone. Puck coming inside. We're dumping it out in front, and it's going to be another face-off in the attacking zone. Yeah, if like I said before, extended, you're going to be seeing these highlights coming thick and fast, and I'm going to be trying my damnedest to keep up with it. Seberg taking a shot, saved by the goalkeeper. Gets it up to number 18, gets it inside. Number 18, that's uh, Richard Panic. Richard Panic scoring for the Blackhawks. It's 1-0 to the away side. Patrick Kane called for hooking. He's going to see himself in the box for the next two minutes. St. Louis Blues. On a power player, they're going to score here. It's a nice couple of shots they've been getting on. Number 55 doing extremely well with his chances. Scott Darling with some great saves to prevent the Blues from scoring right here. St. Louis still coming forward. 55 with another shot. And this is St. Louis power play all the way. All of these chances. But Scott Darling doing his damnedest to cover up every single shot. Less than a minute left to go. We keep the puck in. And Jonathan Taze is now sitting in the box now. Two minutes for roughing. Uh, I think we need to, to bring this back a bit. I think we need to bring back our uh, aggressiveness just a little touch because I don't want to continuously have a man down, especially against the Blues. And the Blues are known for being a physical team as well. If we're trying to play to the Blues' style, we're going to lose. But anyway, after the first period, yeah, it didn't take a lot of shots. We took seven. We were able to get the one on net. Uh, outside of that, not doing all too well. See, we need to not get the shots from the blue line. We need to start pushing inside. Anyway, let's take a look and see who the Blues goalkeeper is. We've got Jonathan Allen, or Jonathan Allen, Jake Allen, as 6'2". Should we shoot it towards the high side? You know what? I'm going to do that. I'm, this may not be you know, the best idea, but we're going to start shooting towards the high side. We're going to ease up on the hitting. Like I said, ease up on the hitting because that's the blue style. That's not our style. So let's confirm that and let's drop the puck. Face off in the attacking zone for the blues. Taking shots left and right, but good saves and we kill off the power play. And since we killed off the power play, it's been very mild. About eight minutes right now without a highlight, except we see one right here. And it's once again towards the blues who continue to take shots. And the highlight ends continuously good saves from Darling. Let's see if he can stand on his head for this game. And with Darling, I've only played him in three matches and he's won all three. So he's got to be doing something right. And in fact, everyone sitting in front of him has got to be doing well as well. But uh, maybe we can continue his perfect record today. Here's crossing fingers that we do. We're still continuing in the offensive zone. Seabrook taking a shot. And now it's a Blues player with a slashing call. So we got ourselves a power play. Like I said, we've trained up on this. That we are starting to get a little bit better with scoring goals on the power play. Can we do it here? So no goals in this period. Let's take a look at the shot chart. A lot more shots coming from the blue line than pushed forward. And that's not good for us. We need to start crashing the net uh, still not a lot of shots taken high, which means that the tactic that I have of telling these guys to shoot high is not really working. So go back to not specified. I'm going to keep everything else the same and let's drop the puck for period three. Just about five minutes into this period and the Blues coming forward and Tarasenko taking a shot saved by Darling. Like I said, Tarasenko, the guy that we really need to watch out for because the Blues with him on the ice can score at will. Here they come again and it's shot wide. I'm very wary about switching up my tactics right now, switching up my lines. What I'm seeing right now is we're doing very well, holding off the Blues right now. I keep saying that, and the Blues come forward once again. And Kruger, Marcus Kruger, into the penalty box he goes. Another two minutes for tripping. And it's another two minutes. We got to hope that we don't give up a goal. Final two minutes of the match, and the Blues are going to an empty net situation, which means that, oh, defensively, we need to be extremely cautious here. Coming through, taking chances. Blues with the six attackers. If we can just steal the puck and shoot it down net, that would be absolutely the best situation right here so we can get ourselves a two-goal advantage. And they would not be able to come back. Well, hopefully not be able to come back. Darling continuously making saves. Covers up the puck right there. And it's a face-off. In fact, the Blues are actually on a power play right now. The Blues are on a power play, meaning it's 6-4 to four and Tarasenko right at the death. Are you kidding me right here? The Blues with 22 seconds left to go in the match. On a power play, it was 6-4. to four, Have just leveled the match and we're going to be going to overtime. It's, it's pretty clear right now we're going to overtime. Oh, boys. How do you bottle that so badly? Ah, uh, how do we bottle that? We uh, I don't want to I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think about it. Now we got 20 seconds in and we got ourselves 3 on 3 overtime hockey boys. 
But so far, overtime hockey has been largely ineffective and uneventful right now, but the Blues coming forward, taking shots, Darling with a save. And as I said before, overtime hockey is a three-on-three -three for five minutes. If nobody scores in that time, it goes to shootout. At this point in time, I'd rather prefer to it to go to a shootout since we've been doing extremely well in shootouts. We're four for four in them. Puck coming inside. It's dumped out. Jonathan Taze coming through. He could take the shot. It's over the net. 40 seconds left. We just need to dump the puck out. Don't keep it in the zone. Oh my god, are you serious? Oh, uh, so not only do we give up a goal, 22 seconds left to go in the game to tie it up, then the Blues with 36 seconds left to go in overtime have won it. Oh, that's that's poor. The only solace is we get a point out of it, but we can't lose to St. Louis. What are you doing, guys? With how we were doing, I thought we would have had that game on lockdown. With how many saves that Darling was putting forth, Scott Darling right here, and the defense just continuously making plays, how do we falter? Not just right at the death of regulation, but right at the death of overtime, too. All right, so let's get into the match versus Calgary, and there's going to be a couple of changes on the line. Duncan Keith, Brent Seabrook going to be out due to fitness. We're going to put in Kempney for his first ever start and Trevor Van Riemsdyk on the lines, and the lines are going to be like this. Uh, no change to the forwards. Defensively, Jalmerson, Roosevelt move up to first. Campbell and Polka up to second. Kempney and Van Riemsdyk down to third, so we'll confirm that. Let's get into the match. Nothing's going to change. We're back home at the United Center, so let's drop the puck and hope that we can get ourselves a goddamn win this time around. Not even four minutes in, we're already shooting the puck really well. Jalmerson from the blue line. Good save from the goalkeeper, Elliott. Puck coming around. Jordan Tutu getting it out to Jalmerson, taking the shot. It's right in front of the keeper, but it's a cross check by a Flames player, and it's going to be a power play for the Blackhawks. Come on, boys. That's what you're training for. Get yourself a power play goal. First period just flying by, not a lot of highlights, not a lot of shots as we're coming up to the end of the period. Let's take a look at the shot chart because really there hasn't been a lot of anything. Actually, we did have a lot of shots taken, just didn't see a lot of that through the highlights. Eight to six and most of them, well, most of them are at the bottom. They're all over the place. I don't think we should be changing things up, but let's take a look and see how Elliot is. He's another six foot two goalie, so I don't know if I should really be shooting towards the high side. You know what I should be doing though? Let's, let's give this a, a little workout, though. Let's try and shoot at his glove side. Try and force him to make the save using his glove. So we're going to go with that. And let's drop the puck for the second period and see what goes down. All right, there's an icing call 12 seconds in. Yeah, not good for us. And oh, oh, definitely not good for us as the Flames just scored from that. Oh, boys. I mean, if you got a tally of dumbass goals, that's definitely up there as one of them. And it's going to be another power play for the Hawks as uh, Boma goes in for hooking. I believe he was the same guy that got the penalty last time. So, boys, come on. Just push forward. Get that damn goal. Equalize the match. Puck coming forward. The Flames still in the zone, working very hard to get this puck into the middle. And Troy Brower has just doubled the lead for the Flames. What's going on here, boys? Is it my defense? It's probably my defense. Duncan Keith and Seabrook not in the lineup today. It's probably what's leading to this. There we go. We got ourselves an offensive zone. Patrick Kane coming through, but it's another cross check from the Flames. And we got ourselves yet another power play. We've gone 0 for 2 today on these power plays. Can we get one out of this? The sights are not lined up in our shots today. And uh, defensively, we're just all over the place. That's what's contributing to our losing right now. Number 89 is oh, okay number 24 actually got called for a roughing ryan hartman so now we are on the penalty kill and that's the end of the period there's just so many shots taken from the blue line and i don't want to see that many shots from the blue line get more towards the net so you have a better chance really just just start shooting just really start shooting let's go start shooting high shooting more often just we need just put as many Pressure shots on nets force the keeper into making a mistake. That's what we need right now So starting the period a man down already the flames coming forward with chances Crawford covering that up and so far in this series pulling the goalie has never been beneficial to me In fact, we've given up goals when we pulled the goalie So it's not like we it's not like we can pull a st. Louis in the last match and score a goal with a six-man advantage It's just not gonna happen for us so 219, I just pulled the goalie, and we got ourselves an extra attacker. Can we get ourselves a goal around it? Uh, come on, boys, clear it out. Don't keep it in the zone for too long because you're going to absolutely 
get yourselves into a world of hurt. And right now, yeah, I need to put the goalie back out there. I need to put the goalie back out there because the faceoff is in our zone. We need to, all right, now that we got it back, pull the goalie. This is all a very convoluted process, but we shouldn't be down two goals to nil at this point anyway. Ah, it's all very frustrating. It's just all for naught at this point in time. Coming through 12, taking off the puck, still around, bouncing around, and that's going to be offsides. 5 4 3 2 1. Final whistle goes. Flames 2, Blackhawks 0. And today has been a day of just utter crap as we lose both matches. And against the Blues, we shouldn't have lost. I thought we would come away with a 1 0 win. That one stings more than losing to the Flames, but at least we got a point out of that. This one, we didn't get anything. So we dropped down a couple places to fourth place to end this episode. And let's take a look and see when we'll be coming back next time around. I think it might be the end of of the month in fact there's six seven with the wild there let's take a look and see what the matches are in december you know what we'll do that we'll take a canadian trip we'll take on a couple of canadian teams in the ottawa senators and the winnipeg jets next time around not the best of days results wise tactically didn't change up too much of course against the flames just changing personnel around because of fitness and clearly it didn't work too much because defensively we were just all over the place. So I need to really have Keith and Seabrook on my defensive line if I want to have some defensive stability. Now I know that. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching the episode. If you enjoyed it, please go and drop a like, share and subscribe and all that jazz. And if you want to leave a comment below on what you thought about the episode or the series as a whole so far, please leave it in the box below. I appreciate every comment you put forth. But anyway, guys, this is Gendo, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and peace out.